Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back to my channel. After just over a year ago of its unofficial debut at Computex 2017, Cryorig finally released their very interesting lineup of air CPU coolers, which are completely made out of copper from head to toe. And what's also interesting about them is that they are based on their already ongoing portfolio, that in my case being the low profile C7 model, which is this time called the C7CU. Right away upon taking its product box in my hand, which is to give you some additional context, fairly small compared to your, so to speak, regularly sized air CPU coolers, I noticed how heavy it is, and that's a good tell that the product you're holding is made out of copper instead of usual aluminium when it comes to air CPU coolers, as it's approximately three times more dense. This one is coming in at just above 600 grams, and that's without the fan. The design is definitely eye-catching, we don't see this a lot, if at all, and it will be interesting to put it in a build and try to arrange a certain look around it. The structure of it is basically completely the same as with the regular C7, and it's not too complicated to begin with as it's not too big in size. We have a total of four 6mm heat pipes intertwined between 57 copper fins in an S-shape from one opposite end to another, making contact in the middle with a pretty smooth nickel-plated copper CPU base and taking the heat off of it and dissipating it further. That said, it can handle up to 150 watts of TDP. The 92mm fan comes in this white and grey color scheme and has a 4-pin PWM header and can spin up to 2500 RPM. It's easily removable from the top of the heatsink, it has these two clips on each side, so if you want to you can remove it so you can clear the air for the process of installation just like I did. Speaking of the installation, it's also very easy and straightforward to do. You basically have two scenarios depending on the CPU manufacturer and socket, so that's Intel or AMD, and everything else is already in place, being the accompanied bottom backplate which comes with the bundle, or these installation plates on the cooler itself. You just need to adjust them to one of two positions. One position is for Intel's 1150X socket, while the other is for AMD's FM1, 2, AM3 and AM4 sockets, and the last one was what I've used as I had an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G APU sitting on MSI's Micro ITX Mortar B350 chipset based motherboard. After you set the plate's position, you can then thread in with fingers these long screws or additionally with a wrench if you want to. Just be sure to double check which thread hole corresponds to which socket spacing in the manual and that's basically it. Of course, put on your thermal paste, being it Cryorig CP7 which comes with the bundle or in my case Cryonaut from Thermal Grizzly. Put the cooler on, place the bracket on the other side and tighten everything down with these hex nuts and the supplied hex screwdriver. Oh yes, and of course, don't forget to remove the default AM4's cooler anchors with its backplate. The bottom bracket itself already has all the necessary holes to cover these sockets, so you don't have to do anything around it, just align it properly, put it on and screw everything down. If you're having problems with the clearance of the components on the backside of the motherboard and for some reason you cannot use the supplied backplate, you can use a combination of also supplied washer risers and screw nuts on top of them. After all that was done, I finally put the fan back on, connected the fan cable to the motherboard CPU fan header, which by the way has this very lovely white braided sleeving and also routing canal going around the top of the fan, and went on to test the cooler out. As I've said, I've used the name this Ryzen 5 2400G on MSI's B350M mortar motherboard. Everything was set to default, except I loaded up the XMP profile of my HyperX Predator DDR4 RAM. This CPU seemed to be the right fit for this cooler, as its TDP is stated at around 65 watts. During idle I was seeing the package temperature being below 30 degrees Celsius or to be more precise just around 3 to 4 degrees Celsius higher than the ambient temperature. After a few consecutive Cinebench R15 multicore rendering runs, the max recorded temperature in hardware monitor wasn't going over 67 degrees Celsius, while in the worst case scenario in AIDA's system stability testing I've recorded a max temperature of just under 73 degrees Celsius. The heatsink itself wasn't showing more than 35 to 36 degrees Celsius on on my thermometer gun and was basically just warm to the touch. That's a pretty decent performance from a so to speak small footprint CPU air cooler like this one. But there is a catch, I've noticed that the motherboard's default fan curve ramped up the fan speed pretty high to begin with, making it pretty noticeable sound-wise and also bumping the performance a bit. In idle that was around 1800 to 1900 RPM, while under load it was around 2300 to 2400 RPM. Here's an audio snippet of how loud that was, as well as a visual representation through my noise meter.
After this, I went back into the BIOS and set a custom fan curve, which was less aggressive, around 1250 RPM, and checked what kind of temperature will I get in that scenario. This fan speed brought an almost inaudible fan noise, while I saw a 3 degrees Celsius temperature increase during idle, and around 8 to 10 degrees Celsius more during load, so mostly around 80 degrees Celsius for the package temperature, while the clock speed went down on average for about 50 megahertz, which is still acceptable, especially now considering the lower noise pollution. But I think I achieved the golden middle with bumping up the fan speed by 200 rpm more, so just below 1500 rpm, where the fan was still really quiet and the temperature was around 75 to 78 degrees Celsius, with the CPU speed again being 3.7 gigahertz. Since I was pleased with what I've saw so far, I've decided to throw another challenge to this cooler and put it on a more TDP savvy CPU, Intel's Core i7-6700K. As expected, the CPU temperature was on the higher side as you can see it here, around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius during load, with peaks being just above 90 degrees Celsius, but still reasonable considering what I had at hand and that I didn't experience any thermal throttling. In terms of stock settings, it will definitely do just fine, especially if you have a well-ventilated chassis, while I would avoid any further manual overclocking. As for the fan curve, I didn't modify it. My Gigabyte Z270X Gaming 5 motherboard did a good job on that by default, at least during idle as it was roaming anywhere from 13 to 1400 RPM, which was still acceptable noise-wise when we talk about an open testbed, but during load it was maxed out at around 2600 RPM, making it it really loud. In the end I didn't manually lower that down and made a custom fan curve because I don't think the CPU will be useful in that scenario, it would probably thermal throttle, but it's still good to see what this little cooler is capable of, and with some undervolting you could easily tame something like a Core i7-6700K even more. There's no doubt in my mind that Cryorig made a really unique and great performing product for its segment, ideal for an ATX or SFX build, but you have to consider that it comes at a price premium compared to its regular C7 counterpart, or to be precise, the C7C you received a price price boost from the original $30 to $50, so that's $20 more in total. From this point on, you'll have to weigh in yourself if it's worth it that much extra to you. Do you see value in it like so, being it on account of its cool looking design or its performance? That's it for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below, so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, catch you later guys!